<laughs> All right, I think we did it. I think we're back. <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics. And today we're back with another episode of Sew Together Tuesday. And today we are going in a direction that we haven't gone, I don't think at all, since we started doing these over the last year, um, where we're doing a puppy themed thing. We haven't done any pet themed things, have we? I don't think so. I don't think so either. Like, I just realized, like, wait, this is the first. Hey guys, so thanks for being here. We are doing the, let me show you, the puppy pillow. So this is a cute little pattern from Sally Tomato. And it was designed with our fabrics in mind. So it's perfect for uh, your little animals. So if they have a, uh, a cat thing too, but I honestly feel like cats would probably like this. If you just didn't tell them it was a puppy pillow. <laughs> so it's a cute little pattern and it comes in lots of different sizes. So it comes from an extra small, which is what we're gonna make today because it's convenient and um, goes all the way up to an extra, extra large. And so it's super, super good little pattern that we're gonna do. Uh, we wanna ma make sure that you know that you are Welcome to be here. We're very excited that you're here and that we do a giveaway every week. So make sure, so this is your first time here and you probably don't know that we do this. So make sure and share our video and you'll be entered to win. And at the end of today, after we finish making our little project, we'll be giving away a kit. Sally Tomato has also offered to give away a free pattern. So there will be a free download involved if you win as well. So go ahead and share our video to your sewing friends, to your profile, to any sort of um, sewing group that you have. And um, thanks for sharing and spreading the cuddle love. We appreciate it. So um, I'm gonna I forgot to take my hoodie off. So I'm gonna do that, sorry guys. <laughs> I forgot and now I'm like, oh, I'm gonna start moving and then I'm gonna get warm. All right, so <laughs> we're back. Okay, so the puppy pillow is super cute. I am not a dog person. So I didn't have a dog to try this on. So of course I made one, um, cause that's what I did. And I used Funky Friends, um, Pete. <laughs> yeah, puppy dog Pete is the pattern. Super cute, look at this little guy. He's adorable, look at the little tail. <laughs> He's so cute. So anyway, so I made this guy to go in our little puppy pillow. So we'll see how he fits. Um, but really cute little guy, okay. Um, <laughs> all right, so we have a few things that we're going to be using. The puppy pillow is really just, oh, right, we need the pattern. Thanks. We need the pattern and all the goodies. So here are the ingredients, what you'll need. You'll need to have, obviously, the pattern. I'm using the Digital Cuddle What's Up Dog uh, Cuddle 3. Well, it's a digital cuddle, but it's the flat cuddle. The Lux Cuddle is the Galaxy Denim Night, which Galaxy is super cool because it has a few different colors in it, and this has like a deep blue-black color. You'll also want a 45 millimeter rotary cutter, a self-healing cutting mat, Micro serrated scissors. I'm using the ones that are either by Kai or Fomori. I use both of them interchangeably. Um, a 90-14 stretch needle, flower head pins, polyester thread, which is the Metro scene from Mettler, stiletto pressing tool by Annie, which you know I love, the polyester fiber fill. So today we're using polyfill by Fairfield. And if you have watched before, you know I kind of flip-flop between the um, fiber fills. And we'll talk about why I chose this one for this project. Uh, hand sewing needle to sew it up. Uh, if you want to do it the way that they suggest, you can also do a zipper. And I'm going to show you a zipper method. You can be, have a pre-made pillow that you've made with muslin and fiber fill. We're going to use a moisture barrier today that is called Shield. It's also by Fairfield Projects or um, Fairfield World and Slipper Gripper, which is the bottom stuff. So all of those are optional, just different ways of doing the bottom in a way that will make it easier slash better for you. Um, so the reason I wanted to offer some variations is the zipper will make it so that you can put a pillow in there that you've made that will be able to take out and then you can wash the whole project. So if you just stuff it and then you sew it shut, it makes it a little less washable. It's still washable, but the, and the stuffing is likely to get all lumpy and weird in there. So if you make a pillow, you can make the pillow and take that out and then you can wash the whole outside project. So that's the way that we're going to do it today. Okay. So I also suggested using slipper gripper. If you're part of our, I love cuddle group. I posted, it's a Facebook group that we have that you're all welcome to. And I posted about this yesterday. So I guess I was like, I'm sewing with a paper towel. <laughs> it's weird. I know. So this is my little zipper version. We'll talk about that in a second. This one, I just used slipper gripper, which is this, um, my, oh yeah, you can see that pretty well. Um, so it's the fabric that you get that goes on the bottom of slippers and pajamas and that sort of thing. Okay. So it has the little dots on here that grip. 
which is great. All right, so this comes in black, obviously, or white. So whatever works for you, this works really well. I just cut a section that was, I can't remember what I did. Let me see. Uh, this was six by 11 is what this piece is. I'm not sure if this was the same. Mm, nope, not quite. I think six by nine, Let's see. eight. Okay, so six by eight is what I did for this. And basically what I did is I put the slipper gripper on and um, I've talked before that I like to do the experimenting for you guys so that I can figure out what works. The first time I did this, the foot kept trying to grab onto the slipper gripper and then it was just bunching up my fabric underneath. So it ended up being that this was basically all um, gathered on the back and so it wasn't working. I couldn't figure out what to do. Then I realized if I put something in between, it would be okay. So I used a paper towel and I had it. And luckily one little, like the little half sheets that you pull off was exactly the same size as the slipper gripper I'd cut. And then I did this, cut this off. And then I stitched all the way around covering up the slipper gripper and stitching my zigzag all the way around. So you can see there's a couple little blips of paper towel still in there. It worked really well. So what I did is I stitched around it once and then I turned it over, and once I had a placement, I stitched it again. So it's been stitched twice with this really big zigzag. Okay, and you can see my bobbin and my upper thread were different colors. So that's what I did there, and that paper towel worked really well. You can also use tissue paper, and there's a few other things. You just want something that you could pull out. I just happened to have a roll of paper towels up here, and I was like, let me see if that'll work. And a water-soluble stabilizer? A water-soluble stabilizer would totally work too. Yeah, yeah, I just didn't have it here. I just had paper towel, and I was like, I need something. So whatever you want to do, put something over that slipper gripper. That's the whole point is put something over the slipper gripper because it's so grippy that it just wanted to grab onto the actual foot. Because I know like if you turn it the other way, it, the feed dogs will grab it just fine and pull it through. But it definitely wanted to stick to my, my foot and I needed to see where the edge of it was. So use something over the top, stitch it down. This would work really well if you have a house that has like we have cement floors. So it's real slick. And if you had like wood, wood floors or tile floors, the cuddle on that, as we know, can be really, really slick. So if you put the slipper gripper on the bottom of it, the bed will sort of stay there. Okay. So that was the idea there, <clears throat> excuse me, is that you will have something that will stick to the floor. So when they land on that bed, the bed doesn't just slide. It just stays where it's supposed to. Okay. So the idea with the zipper is that it will give us a place to get our little pillow in and out. So we did a tutorial, I'm not even sure, months ago now, about how to do a zipper in Cuddle. So you can go back and reference that one if you wanna try the zipper. It's actually super duper easy. I used some Wonder Tape and then I just stitched it down. So this is uh, like basically Wonder Tape together and then I did a little stitching about a quarter inch from the zipper edge, okay? and then just flipped it over. There's no top stitch or anything. So that's the way this works. And then I stitch the end. And I use the, um, the zippers from By Annie. They oh. come in these little packs where I can't remember how much you get. It turned out really nice. So yeah, I can't remember how, many you, how much yardage you get in here, but it's a few yards and then you get a bunch of pulls. And this works really well for all of her, we froze. Um, it works really well for all of her bags. So that's what she sells it for. But it worked really well for this project because I could make this however long I wanted it. So it's basically zippers by the yard with the poles. So that's what I did and put a zipper in. Okay. So there's another alternative for you. So we're going to do it with the zipper. Like I said, I'm doing the extra small and the sizes are all in here. And then you just follow the layout of what she has for how you want to put it. So we're following this little layout. So I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and cut the rest of it. So I've got the back done. Oh, and then I used one other product. So this one is called Shield. I didn't talk about this yet, did I? No. <laughs> I've talked about it a couple times this morning. I'll make sure I've talked about it to the right people. So this is called Shield. It's from Fairfield. It's a PUL, and it is just a barrier. So one of the things that I know about animals and children is they are all messy. So if we use this in there, it will help keep the mess from soaking through to the pillow. That was my thought is it creates a barrier and that can be very helpful. So I'm using this. So this will be my bottom of the, um, of the little bed. This will go underneath the top part. And now we need to cut these pieces out. So for the tiny one, it's a 14 by 19 piece. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that and show you how I do it. So actually I'm gonna move 
some more stuff so I can get more of my table showing. <laughs> Pete says hi. Hey, so I'm just going to lay this out. And as usual, I like to mark it and then cut it. And so we're going to do that and make sure that it is the right size. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a line here because I can tell my end is not perfectly straight here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to do, so I want it 14 deep and 19 wide because it's that sort of a rectangle, right? So I'm going to start here. I'm going to mark my one, scoot this up, and find my 19. What's a P-U-L? Polyurethane laminate, I think. They okay. use it for like diaper covers and uh, for pillow covers. You can use it for mattress covers, that sort of thing. It's a water resistant um, covering. So when people make diaper covers, that's usually what they make it in. That's what I've seen actually the bulk of it used for. So that's what it is. So 14 inches here. And I'm just going to come down my board, mark 14 inches. And mark 14 inches. And this should be 19 if I got it anywhere near straight. Oh, look at that. I actually did. I'm very proud of myself. Okay, I'm going to come nice. down here and mark the 19, and then I will draw my whole rectangle out. So I know people often talk about that they tried to get it cut right and it ends up messed up, and I will tell you this is my secret is to just mark it and then cut it because it's really easy to cut it, move it slightly, and then it starts to get off. So I've marked the whole thing. Make sure I've got my 14 inches. I could do a little double check. Yep, 14 inches. Oops, I got a little high. Straighten that out just slightly. So you can do this thing where you double check, make sure everything's right, and then you cut it. That's great. Okay. And this, because this is a digital cuddle, the nap on this is actually um, pretty short and isn't messy at all. So I just go ahead and use my rotary cutter. Sorry, in this one I have to get in a weird position to cut it. Because I have to cut from the side. <laughs> a little sneak peek of the side, the side of the studio there. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now I've got the whole thing cut and I can just take it put these in my scrap pile over there okay <laughs> all right so you can see cutting it with the rotary cutter it doesn't leave a whole big mess because cuddle three just isn't super messy okay so i'm gonna give it a little shake over here now we're gonna cut the top part in the same uh same size but different fabric we're gonna use the lux cuddle with this one so we're using the lux cuddle galaxy night and again i'm gonna use my widthwise to do my 19 inches and uh, lengthwise to do 14. So widthwise, I can tell it's the width because it stretches. Okay, I'm just gonna lay this do that out. again, I was looking at the wrong Oh, sorry, because it stretches. <laughs> there we go, okay. thanks. Doesn't stretch lengthwise, it's just stiff. Okay, so I'm gonna line up my edge here. The first line I'm gonna draw is gonna be along my selvage because I, I know my selvage is basically straight. So, I'm just going to draw a line here. Okay, can you guys see the black okay? Uh, yeah, because I'm going to come around this way. Okay. There we go. All right, so now I can take this one and I can mark my... I want to do 14 inches, so let me not take it completely out of the middle. Okay, so there's one, and there's 14. And there's my corner. So then I can come along here, and I'm just going to line my line of the ruler up with the line that I drew. Try to get a nice square. Okay, you can also use something like this where you can line this up. Okay, and I can line these up just tiniest bit better where this one comes right along here and matches, and then this line matches, and then I can draw my line, okay? And that I know I get a much better square at. So when you're dealing with um, for like self-binding blankets, 
that can be a really good tool to use to get a really nice square on those corners. All right, so 14 inches this way, 14 inches this way. Make one more mark here, make sure I'm getting this. Okay. And then from here, I wanna mark 19. So I'm gonna butt my ruler up to there, match up my lines, see if that works. Pretty darn good. And I wanna mark my 19 inches. Okay. So now when I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna draw all my lines just like I did before, but I'm not gonna use my rotary, rotary cutter on it. You absolutely can. So if you prefer to use your rotary cutter on it, you can, and uh, it will cut just fine. It will just cut all of the nap off. Why, <clears throat> why didn't you just use the selvage edge on the one side? Because you'd usually do that. I usually do. And I think it's really just because I wanted to get a perfect, <laughs> a perfect 14 by 19. I don't know. Um, you're right. You absolutely could. Uh, I was just trying to get a really straight line. And this selvage actually is really straight. Sometimes they aren't as straight. Um, but because this is a smaller thing, if there's any variation on it, it's going to cause um, some issues. I think that's probably the thought process that went on back here that I didn't actually <laughs> fully th think through. So thanks for, for pointing it out. Because you're right. It, it, and I think, honestly, it is because it's small. If it were a larger length, I'd be like, just leave it. With this one, I want to try to get it exactly 14 by 19. So... Okay. That's what that is. Yeah, that was a good question. You got it. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to use my little blade. So this little guy right here. <clears throat> it's my favorite little tool for cutting Lux Cuddle. It's the Ulfa. See if we can get it without too much shine on it. Uh, SAC-1. There we go. No. Nope. Yeah. There we go. We did it. Phew. All right. So it's got this cute little point. We're going to see how, uh, if I need to pull that blade off there, I might. I mean, I'm just going to drag it down the back of the fabric. Oh, it's cutting okay. And what this does is it cuts the backing of the fabric and not so much of the nap. So when we're doing this with a rotary cutter, it just cuts all of the nap off and I'm trying to avoid that. So you can see it basically just cuts the backing because I'm trying not to push too hard. There are definitely areas I'll have to go back and get, but you can see all of this nap that's left on here would have been cut off with the rotary cutter. So that's the joy of using the Ulfa blade is that it keeps all of this nap on there. So when I move this, it's not going to be quite nearly as messy. All right. So it, it does take longer, but it definitely is less messy. So the biggest key is just keeping some sort of a, a pressure on here. And you'll notice that I kind of just drag my hand as I go. <coughs> Excuse me. And I need water. We are not prepared for that. We are not. I'm gonna look and see. It doesn't look like it. Dang it. Okay. I'm just going to cut right along here. Same way, just drag my blade all the way across. Okay. You can see that on, excuse me, I'm going to cough again. <coughs> you can see that on this side. So compare this side where I have nap on both sides. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, where I have nap on both sides. If I cut this with a rotary cutter, I'm going to have a whole lot of nap going around. On this side, you'll notice because this is the lengthwise cut, I only have it off one side. This changes depending on the fabric, depending on the direction you're cutting it. So usually these, um, the widthwise cuts are the messiest. So lengthwise cuts tend to be less crazy. Widthwise ones have lots, lots of nap hanging off. Okay, one more. We'll get this all cut out. So the lengthwise ones are usually faster, easier, less messy. And I know it has to do with how the, the nap is on there. Okay. 
So now, so even though I cut just cut Lux Cuddle, okay, come on in and see the mess. You'll see there's not really a lot of mess, okay? There's a little bit here. I got one little guy right there. One little guy right there. That's it. Okay. Now if I shake this there. and move this, there'll be some that's loose that will come off. Okay. I promise you, not nearly as much as if you had used the rotary because all of this that you see right here would then be cut off and be on your table plus more on the other side. It just, it's so much less messy to do this way. So you can see it takes the tiniest bit longer, maybe not a tiny bit, a little bit longer, but it is so much less messy and so much easier to deal with. Okay. I'm going to throw this in my scrap bin. <laughs> Okay, we'll give it away at the end of the month on the I Love Cuddle page. Okay, and this I'm just going to give a little shake over here. Okay, all right. So now, if I did this correctly, we should have a few pieces that are all the same size. Okay, so these two are going to go together. These two are going to live as a pair. This is the top of my pet bed, okay? So this is the moisture resistant stuff. It's gonna go right under here. It's gonna keep any mess like this, okay? And that stuff, the shield is machine washable, machine dryable. Absolutely can take it. Um, it says on there that you can wash it in hot and dry it in hot. So we don't wanna do that with Lux Cuddle, Cuddle in general. You're gonna wash it in um, uh, just a cool, cool wash and then dry it for just a little bit in the dryer and let it line dry most of the time. But just so you know that the shield stuff, if you use that, it is totally um, washable as well. So this, before we get started on putting the top on, I'm going to go ahead and stitch this all the way around with a little zigzag. I'm going to pin it in place and basically just baste it onto my top piece so that then they work as one and I'm not going to fight them as we go. All right, because otherwise, if I'm trying to keep layers together, it will get me unhappy. Okay, so I'm just going to pin these in a few places. It's not going to have to be perfect. It's just going to have to be attached. Okay, and I am going to sew it from this side so I can see is what is a, happening. Is there a right side and a wrong side to the shield? There is a plasticky part and a softer part. This plasticky part is much like the slipper gripper and that my foot will stick to this. So I turn it so it's this and I think that in the instructions they say about putting this toward the fabric um, and sewing it with this side up if possible. Okay. I also know because it's got that um, plasticky bit to it, it will definitely want to stick to the bottom of the foot. If you have a walking foot that has like a Teflon bottom, you can use that as well. Uh, I don't, so my most walking feet don't come that way. But there are Teflon feet. If you've ever had to sew with like funky stuff, the Teflon foot works great for things like that slipper gripper and leather and stuff like that vinyl. Okay, so I'm just gonna pin this a little bit just to keep it in place and then we'll come on over. Could you serge this step? Um, I guess you could. I have a hard time keeping my fabrics together very well when I'm working with the serger, so I would still probably just zigzag this. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. The serger and me are not really good friends with Cuddle. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I have a hard time getting them to stick together and it's easier for me just to not fight that fight. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make sure. Okay, my needle's gonna come down where I want it to and I'm just gonna come right along this edge. And just zigzag this. Stitch size on this is five and a five. Five and a five. That's my my good old default. Once I saved it in there, I realized you could do that. You could just save it. Now when I turn it on the zigzag, it's there. I just leave it. For oh, that. Mary says for best water resistance, keep the pins in the seam allowance. Oh, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That does. Yep. You just perforated your shield barrier. I did. I did. I'm also not going to use a dog in there that doesn't actually get damp in any way. Shape, that, or that, form. That, that, that's true. Oh. So I think mine will be safe, but you're right. It's like when you're using any sort of laminated fabric. He thinks it'll be okay. And probably <laughs> you could also use wonder clips for this part too. That's a good point, Mary. As somebody who has dogs, I'm assuming it was Mary Stevens. Am I wrong? Push. Yeah. Sorry, I gotta scroll back. Oh no. Yep, yep, yep totally. it was Mary. And Mary has dogs. She knows 
<laughs> she knows that I wouldn't have a dog that actually was real. But Mary has some some nice nice dogs. Okay. She's got a big one right now. I can't remember its name. All right. Speaking of big dogs, here. the pattern, the way this pattern is set up is it goes by um, sort of a weight, uh, mm -hmm. weight categories and it goes all the way up to 110 pounds. So if you've got a dog bigger than 110 pounds, um, it's just sleeping in bed with you, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so I got a little bit of a pleat right here because things moved up, but I don't care. It doesn't matter at all. All right. So now this is going to be the top of my yeah, you can just stay over here. Um, okay. This is going to be the top of my bed. And what I need to do next is to get this little blanket part. Did I cut this the wrong I did. <laughs> oh, no. I just realized I cut it the wrong size. Hold on. Because <laughs> it's supposed to be bigger than 14 by 19. This is what happens. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we're using a different fabric. Oh no, I cut it out the wrong size. I tried to prep yesterday, you guys. I cut it to I cut it to the right size. So oh look, I have some more. Skeptical I puppy some is more. skeptical. I know, I would be skeptical too. All right, this is when we pull out the pattern. <laughs> All right, so it'll tell you here what sizes you need to cut for the blanket and for the top. The blanket needs a bigger size. Okay, do you remember that number there, Hawk? Yeah, 22 by 17. All right, let's do that. All right. <laughs> you guys always co comment on how, like, you're very real. You just mess up like we do. I'm like, here I am. You guys are up. benefiting, too, because that piece, guess where it ends up? <laughs> That's right, in, in the scrap box. box. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is going to get some. All right. Let's see. So we're going to do this whole measuring thing one more time. Thankfully, this is the rotary cutter part where it's a little faster. Okay. The biggest thing is when you are cutting your fabric is to please, please make sure to get it as flat as possible before you start measuring it. And I kind of can use this to kind of like swish things out a little. Okay. I noticed that my, oops, my bottom here is cut very crooked when it came off the bolt. Okay. I don't know how that happened, but it definitely happens. I mean, I don't know if it was me or somewhere else, but um, it definitely happens where it will get cut crooked. So please um, make sure that you straighten it up by checking it out. I need my Sharpie. I'm just going to use a new one. Okay. <laughs> what was it again? 22? 22 by 17. Okay. No, are, are we... Here Does we it go. matter whether that's up and or down, depending on the 22 price? is going to be wide. Okay. Because it ends up being, um, I think, about three inches larger. You can blame me. Right? You, yesterday, you were like, remind me to blah, 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 blah <laughs> about that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I, we're going to say I blew it. No, we just say, yeah, it happens. It happens. All right. So 22 by 17. So 17 needs to be this. No, nope. 22 yep. needs to be this way. Oh, that line didn't get straight. We recut or remark. See, this is why we mark. I'm telling you people, this is why we do it. It's because things go crooked all the time. It's a knit fabric. It does weird things. Okay. So what did we say on this one? 17. 17. Just going to reiterate, everybody's going to be like, 17, Teresa said 17. <laughs> All right. I, th I think, I, I think so I've got 17. Her. Maybe. And we'll do it over here. Because it's 14 and it needs a little bit of space. Okay. So I'm going to remeasure this because I measured it slightly crooked when I came up from that corner. Oh, uh, I see. So now I can go ahead, get that nice and straight, make the mark. So make it go from the real 22 down to the 22. Get across here. All right. So now we've got it marked. We'll cut it out again. All right. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, guys. All right. I'm going to move this. Now I'm going to move this just a little bit because I can feel it was hitting something under here and I don't really want to cut my other fabric on accident. So I'm just going to move it. But once I've got these lines in here, I can move this and I can just get it back straight. So even if this part is now all crooked, 
this part is straight and I can cut it on the line because I know exactly where the straight line is. So I can keep doing that same thing where I just straighten this part out and I don't really care what the rest of it's doing because I've marked it straight. Okay, and I think that that's um, an important part to remember when you're cutting the cuddle because it does like to shift and move. So if we can sort of work with it a little bit at a time, so now I can cut that off and I can turn this whole thing and cut it again. Okay, because I've got my lines drawn in there. So really the drawing the lines part is, is super important to getting an accurate cut. And you can see I drew the line, getting it nice and flat and then drawing the line. And now I can get it nice and flat to where it was and cut the lines. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. We're back. We're back. It's like it never happened. Sort of. Okay. Twice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the nap of the fabric, this is the galaxy and I can feel the nap goes this way. It doesn't really matter because I mean, you might want it so that the, the nap goes in when they go, like it would be really up to you. Okay. Then this part is the little blanket part that will go on top. It is bigger so that they can get under it. If you make it to the exact same size, it'll be a tight fit. Um, so the first thing we need to do is hem this underneath. So we have a couple of ways of doing that. I'm actually going to use my wonder tape. And I'm going to just put this down right along the edge here. So you could go ahead and you can um, fold this uh, any way that you would like to. This is just a really easy way for me to be able to do it. And then we're going to fold it up at about an inch. Okay, so Wonder Tape is great. It's like a double-sided um, tape that will stick to your fabric. Go ahead and trim that. And then sometimes you have to work just a little to get the paper to come off and the sticky to stick. And then it just pulls back. And that was very satisfying. Nice yeah. work. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my board just a little bit to make sure that I get this to fold down somewhat accurately. Okay. Because I want to fold it so that it's just about at the inch mark here. And I'm just going to fold it and kind of tack it just a little bit and fold it. Get that even up there. Okay, so now once I have it this way, then I can sort of get it to go down where I want it to in a fairly straight. If you work your way across, you're really likely to stretch it. So that's what I'm trying not to do is to not stretch it because this is your stretchy side and we're trying to avoid doing that. So now I can give it a good little press down here and take it and sew that. Okay. So this is a an inch up. I'm going to I'm going to leave it on my zigzag because that's kind of cute. What happens to the tape uh, after the project is done being sewn? Is it wash out? It washes out. It washes out. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep, there is wash away um, wonder tape and that's exactly how it's labeled which uh yeah it'll it'll wash away it's great for things that you're going to do like um i use it a lot on zippers i use it on the zippers for this and i use it on zippers like in dresses and it's great because if it shows up a little bit on your zipper part it'll just wash out and be fine okay all right so there we go all tacked down ready to go okay now we'll get this back I don't really care which way it goes, so I'm just gonna put it down. Now we're gonna put these two together. So what we wanna do is kind of evenly disperse them. So this is gonna go an inch above. So I'm gonna just gonna use my board because this isn't a super picky accurate measurement. So if I can do it an inch, that's where that's gonna wanna be. Okay, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end and stick a little pin there at about an inch. Okay, 
Now, what we're going to do is fold this in half and find the half marks, basically. So I'm going to fold it from my one inch, because this is the, the halfway of the use, used parts. And I'm actually going to use my Sharpie, because then I won't lose the pins. And then we're going to come back and mark the halves of those. So there's my half mark ish, obviously. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide the part that is larger for the top. We're sort of going to divide it up between these so that it um, that extra fluff is dispersed. So, so you, 22 inches become it gets eased into 19. Right, exactly. It doesn't really get eased into it; it gets pleated into it. Okay. So we're gonna just do this, and you could do more pleats, less pleats, or as many pleats you want to. Okay. Same thing all the way around. If I do it with the sharpie, it's it's easy, and I'm not gonna poke holes in it. It's easy enough to see, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the other part. I want to make them match. Okay, so on here. Oh, look at that was that was a close cut. I got the selvage. Oh. Oops. Thanks. Thankfully, it will should fit right into the seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going to mark all these halves. So I'm just going to mark these kind of lightly because I don't want them to show through at all. I just want to mark it because it's a white background. Let's see, let's see if you can sort of see. You can sort of see that Sharpie mark back there because it's got the white. So I try to be try to be careful with the white and not mark too much on the back. Okay, and because this is a cuddle. Um, that is like a, it's the digital cuddle. This part will start to curl if you stretch it too much. So be really careful as you're doing this that you don't stretch those edges. That's when they start to curl and that gets frustrating. Oh, I see uh, Michael asked for a question. Is the Luxe Cuddle more navy or black? It's more black. So it's, um, it's very similar to the ink sort of color that we have, but it's a very, it's a, very dark blue black, but I would say it's definitely more black than blue. <clears throat> Has a blue undertone, what you would say? Yeah, yeah, I, that makes sense. Yeah, I can. I, I the the camera auto adjusts color all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but Sorry. I feel like, in general, it's it's sort of a charcoal with a little bit of a blue undertone right in here that really very nicely matches the blue in this print as well. I mean, these, this print is these fun coordinate too. These very, very well. Yeah. And it, the blue is fun or the print is fun because it has these little blue and these little peach parts. Yeah. It has some, some cute little things in there. So there's more inside. All right. So I've got those all marked. My cap is here and now we're just going to pin these on. Okay. So I'm going to pin the ends just like we normally do. So I'm going to pin apart here. Okay. And I'm going to pin up here at the corner because this is the parts that we want to make sure that they fit. Oh, uh, I guess uh, there's a note that um, our our nemesis, uh, our, uh, not really a hacker, but the, the person oh. that's impersonating Shannon Fabrics is, 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 is a, well, they're actually uh, rebroadcasting the live mm. and apparently you got married. Oh, look at that. Good to know. Yeah. Again. That's nice. Somebody should have told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Hawk. I forgot to let you know. I got married. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right. So now we've got some spots in here that have the little gaps, right? So I can go ahead and I could put, I can put little ga gathers in here or I make a bigger one in the middle. I'm going to make a bigger one in the middle and make these basically just match. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little pleat. Oh, I want to do this the other direction. Sorry. I want to do it toward the back. 
also just so you know shannon fabrics cannot invite uh a friend request so yes. do not accept a friend request from any shannon fabrics uh entity on facebook they are not us they are not us at all please yeah. report them please ignore them block ignore them, them whatever you got to yeah. do to get through your day yeah, yeah exactly just don't bite yeah they are not they are not your friend we are okay <laughs> totally true thank you all right so now i'm going to match up my center ones again okay and i am doing a little pleat here at my center one and then take that down okay so i'm going to use my pins just put this in place any other ones in between? I want the pins. I'm going to use my pins here because I want these to really actually stay. Um, I don't have as good of luck with uh, the Wonder Clips keeping things really well. So I'm just going to use them in between to keep these evenly spaced, basically. But the pleats themselves, I'm actually going to use pins. So if you were doing this and wanted to make sure that you weren't perforating the actual plastic, you would want to make sure that you pin directly just in the seam allowance. All right. So again, middle one gets folded, making sure that this fits nice and flat. Okay, and if you get some weird little puckers in here otherwise when you're sewing, which we may end up with, it's all good. It's just a little blanket for a dog. Okay. All right. So again, do this. I like the way that the zigzag sort of sinks into that. Let me see if I can get a little close up on that. I don't know if you can really tell in there, but it kind of sinks in there interestingly. So again, my center. And then building my pleats. So this one, let's see, I made the pleat go that way. I want the pleats to go toward the corners. Oh, so it's going to change. That's so they change direction. Point. Yeah, okay. exactly. Got it. I forgot to do that. Okay. So I'm going here. Find my midpoint, make a little pleat. All right, and then one more. And then we're going to go ahead and take this back to the machine and zigzag it in place. What are you laughing? Oh, Jackie. Ha, ha, ha. No pressure, Hawk. Uh, I presume that's about to, <laughs> to, get, about to get hitched to me. Um, yeah, I think both of us might be past that. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> All sense. right. Okay, here we go. So we're going to just stitch this all the way around, same as I did across the front. Okay, I'm going to grab my stiletto so I can make sure and feed this through. So if I get to the point, so I'm going to like kind of just feed this in, make sure that it's nice and flat. If it starts to bunch up, I have pleats in here. I could just add to the pleat and make sure that it works. Okay. I'm going to get my other hand involved here. You know what we're missing? Oh, the light. Ready? Yeah. Look at that. There. Let's try There's it. some light. Oh, look at how much better that got. Maybe. Got better for me. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm very camera centric. It's true. Okay. So I'm going to twist this. Okay. We'll just keep feeding this along. All right, so now I have a pleat that comes this direction, which is a little funky, and that your foot is going to want to push it this way, and that's not what we want. So you want to make sure you can either put your pin at the very edge, or I'm just going to hold it down with the stiletto as it works underneath the foot and get that to catch. Okay. So just grabbing right along here, make sure I get my pins out. Take my little wonder clips out as I get there. Right. And I'll get up to the corner again, do a little turn. So pivot it. So when you're pivoting, always make sure that you keep a, a needle down too. It really does make those pivots a lot better. Oh, I took my pin out way too early. Ah, what was I thinking? There we go. Okay. We're going to get a little, so this is what I was telling you about. Like you could just add another pleat. Look at that. You were thinking that this pillow was replete. It was 
it was replete. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Me neither. I was trying to make something up, and I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I was trying to make something up. It's it is overly pleated now. It is overly pleated. So I just added its third one in that side because it needed a little one to take up for where I took the pin out too early. So don't pay, take the pins out too early, people. All right. I started talking. All right. So now I have the whole top. So this is how the top works. Little puppy's going to fit right in here. Okay. Super easy. Now we just make this into a sandwich. So the important part here is that you're going to bring this so that this all comes to the center. Okay. So that's important that you're not going to catch any of this extra hanging out the side. So if this hangs over here and accidentally gets stuck in your scene, you're going to be sad because um, then you have to take stuff out. Nobody wants to do that. So I'm going to put it all in here. I'm going to put my pillow back on there. I'm going to zip this up just a little bit more. Not too far because I want to make sure that my foot can get past it without trying to have to get over this zipper foot because that's just a pain. Okay, I'm going to push this up. If you need to pin things out of the way, you absolutely can. Hey, look at that. I left the selvage on that side. It's possible. <laughs> okay, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm going to pin my corners first. And then I'm going to pin the other bits. Okay. So again, we talked about this before, I always sort of pin at these inward things because it keeps it in position a lot better. And then along here, I'm actually going to do a little bit of double pinning. So the other thing, you know what I might try? I'm actually going to do I'm going to try those um, big clips to see if I could do it without um, getting too far into the area. That would be uh, that makes sense. Like a technique, because really, if you do want to make this, you know, completely waterproof, waterproof, you would need to hold it down further. And so I'm thinking this might work. We'll give this a try. So these are the jumbo wonder clips, which I like a lot. And I use them a lot when I'm doing self-binding blankets. But I think that they might work really well for this too. So I'm putting this pin in up close because I want to hold it down. I think she uses a half inch seam allowance. No, I can't remember what the pattern calls for. So follow the pattern, but I'm actually going to do a half inch seam allowance. So I want to make sure and catch all that zigzag and catch all my cuddle. And it will only change it a half inch in size, so I don't care too much. My puppy's gonna fit because I have a little tiny dog. <laughs> My mom used to have um, a little a palm and a palm puppy on mix, and this would be the perfect size, I think, for that. Mm, they they're called what are they called purse dogs? Yeah, <laughs> I think they are. <laughs> All right. So on this front part, I want to make sure that this little blanket, because if you're not careful, it can totally get stuck up here. So I want to make sure that that, because that's the loose part. So you really want to make sure that that gets tucked back really nicely. And then I'm catching the edge as well. Okay. One of the other keys with pinning is really to make sure that you are pinning as flat as possible. So doing as little where you're holding it in your hands and trying to pin, this gets really difficult. And sometimes people want to put it in their lap and try to pin. And I really recommend keeping it as flat as possible. Keep it on your board, get it nice and flat, stretched out a little, and you'll have better, better luck pinning it so that it goes together nicely. All right, so let's stick a few more of these guys in there. And I'm going to start sewing there. Okay, and we're just gonna work our way around. So I'm gonna switch it back to a straight stitch and I'm gonna bump mine up to, oops, I'm doing mine down. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, I'm gonna bump it up to a three and a half and start there. If I feel like that's too big, then I might change it, but I think it should be fine. Okay. I am going to back stitch though. Where's my needle down? Get that pin out of there. 
All right. So I'm going to go back stitch it and then just work my way around here. So as always, make sure that you are getting it as straight as possible, coming out the front of your machine and keeping the weight on your table and not in your lap. So you'll notice that I keep my machine pushed back a little bit because it gives me some space up front to have things sit and take the weight off of the needle. And the, like we talked about, it's a 9014 stretch needle. I'm using Mettler's Metrocene thread today. I'm just using the black. Okay, so I'm gonna get up here. I'm gonna do a nice little back stitch, go forward. And always with the polyester thread, right? Always polyester, yeah. Yep. Very important. Uh, and because the polyester, will, the polyester will stretch with the fabric, it also is stronger than cotton. So as I'm going over this, this is going over some of those pleats. So this is why I wanted to base those down first, because the idea of trying to keep those pleats in position as I'm going over this would be really hard. Okay, so zipper. I can see there's my zipper. And because the zipper is, um, I cut, I cut the size for the backing and then I just cut it a, like a three and a half inches from the end is what I did. And then I put the zipper in. So this isn't, I didn't trim it to the exact size. So this right here can be a little loosey goosey with the measurements. So I'm just going to try to get it into position. Go nice and slowly over my zipper. Oh yeah. Even your baby lock was like, what are you, what are you, what doing? Are you asking of me right now? Yeah, exactly. What are you doing? <laughs> Like I'm sewing over a zipper and make sure that you are using a zipper that has plastic teeth. So as we're sewing over, it's really important. The plastic teeth are less likely to get caught in your uh, cuddle as well. That's been my experience at least. Okay, just gonna work our way around. That's quite a pile up I'm getting over there. <laughs> That's going to be fun to put away. This is when I need a studio intern. I'm like, come put away all of my pins. All right, I move this uh, over. I can see this move. I only have two hands. Sorry. I know. It's all right. I'll do it when we're done. Okay. So if you just have the little wonder clips, that would work here as well. But these longer ones work are working really, really well for holding it in place as I go. So I'm, I'm pleased with that experiment. All right, I'm going to lift my turn again. So again, we're going to get to the zipper and kind of go over this funky part. Take it nice and slow. So you can see here, maybe you can see my little zigzag stitches. I put those in before I started to try to keep it uh, together the way that I want it to be. I've definitely lost my zipper pull on a live before, so... <laughs> I tried to <laughs> avoid doing that again today. I remember that fun. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and when we say fun, we really just mean stress. But it worked. All right, I am coming back. So at this point, I want to make sure that it's still laying nice and flat so I can kind of manipulate things, make sure that everything's where it's supposed to be. Because I've basted, this isn't going to move. It's going to be where I want it. So I'm just going to kind of give my fabric here a little tug as it's coming in to get it as flat as possible. Okay. Looks like I got a tiny pucker. A teeny tiny one. Okay. It happens and I can't care. Totally fine. Okay. So now you remember I left the zipper open just a little bit because I didn't want to hit this. It also is what helps you turn this. So if you accidentally zip this up all the way, you can manage to get this open. It's just not as easy. Okay, so I'm gonna open this up. I'm going to trim my corners really quickly. So I'm just gonna use my scissors here. You don't have to, but I'm going to, because sometimes I choose to and sometimes I don't. Um, this one I just wanna, I think it will work a little bit better because I've got a lot of layers here. I'm just going to take a little bit of bulk out of the corners is really what I'm doing. I'm going to make sure I don't accidentally trim off my pleat right there. Okay, so now I can take this, pop those corners out. Okay. Push those all out nice and neat, and then I'll flip the whole thing. And then when we flip this, we just want to make sure that the 
blanket stays on top. You could accidentally flip it. So if that happens and you flip it like this, okay, you didn't do it wrong. You just got to pull the blanket over the top. Jackie, I, okay. I, I don't know what you're asking me. I must have missed something. Okay. I'm, uh, give me a sec while I scroll back through and see what, see what the question is. Oh, what's the light bar over the sewing machine? Is oh. that it? Um, that's a daylight. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna, I'll pop over here and we'll take a look at it. It's a daylight slim line. I don't know if that's called. the question that we're that, that uh, you are asking me to catch us up with, Jackie. But here we go. If not, ask again. Okay, just scroll back to the comments. Yep. <laughs> All right, so now I've got my funky little pillow that I made yesterday with some muslin and some fiber fill. So let's talk fiber fill really quick. So I used the regular polyfill. I have two different kinds. I have two humongo <laughs> packages. There we go. Okay. So if you have, um, if you've watched the Sew Together Tuesdays before, then you know, and like you've watched me do like stuffed animals and stuff. I love the Royal Silk because it's super soft and squishy and yummy. It's really, really good. But it's not as uh, dense. And so the, there's a denseness to the polyfill that is really good for things that you want kind of stiffer. And the Royal Silk is more expensive because it's nicer. So polyfill is cheaper. So I feel like the polyfill is actually a really good um, a choice for this because it's a, it's a utilitarian project. It's not meant to necessarily be squishy and soft like a stuffed animal would be. So if it's a little bit lumpy, it's okay. So if you see, so look at the pillow. Um, I know you're looking for a comment. Is I was, and I haven't found anything so in this yet. So it's okay. So if you look at this, let's see if I can get it to show. You can see it gets kind of lumpy. Okay. And this is a thing that comes up a lot is like, how do I get it to be not lumpy? You have to pull it apart and put it in a little bit of time and then you hope for the best and really stuff it as hard as possible. And that will help get rid of the lumps. The Royal Silk just won't do that at all. Okay. So this is really good for something you want not lumpy at all. This is something that's great for things that you want dense or kind of lumpy. Okay. This can be totally lumpy and I don't care. So it works fine. I just did two squares, the same size as this. I surged the edges. I stuffed it. I closed it up and now I'm just going to push it in here. Okay. So this, I just, like I said, it's just the same size pillow. You could use this with any sort of um, fabric that you wanted to, some extra fabrics. That makes this take outable. That's a phrase, right? Um, and then I could wash this whole thing. Okay. So there's my little zipper in there. Turn it over. So the zipper is near the back and see if puppy likes it. Get in there. Look at him. He's adorable. He's so happy in there. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. So there he is. There's our little puppy pillow. Oh, so let me grab. Well, actually, will you? Can you go over there and grab the other one? So I made a different size the other day. So this is the this is the extra small one, and this is the small. Okay. So let me see if I can get these on here at the same time. So you can see they're pretty drastically different sizes. Okay. Got it. Pretty cute. So this is a small, the extra small, the pattern, like I said, it comes in a lot of different sizes up to the extra, extra large for a very large dog, which I'm guessing would take up most of this table. A Roddy or um, something. Yeah. Yeah. 110 pounds is like, you know, my it's size. what they were saying. Ish. Yeah. So it's, a, <laughs> so it's a, um, a large dog you could stuff these absolutely as much as you want so if you want a little bit flatter one i stuff them a lot because i like them um i like them fuller so i obviously don't have a dog who's going to go in it either so but he is pretty cute the little blanket part we were talking about you could do anything up here so you could use um any sort of cute print that went in your house or we use the dog because it's adorable we have little paw print ones um Super cute. Little frosted shaggy ears. A little Just frosted shaggy me. ears make all really the difference. They're super cute. Happy. So <laughs> it's adorable. So there you go. There's a little pet pillow. Again, I think I think the pattern's on the floor. Um, it's the uh, puppy pillow from Sally Tomato. And she's going to give away a free download for that. And we're going to give away a kit. So thanks for joining me. The winner today is Marie P. So congratulations. Please send us a message that has your name, address, phone number, all that good stuff. And we will get a kit shipped out to you. So thank you so much for being here. We'll be back 
next week as always. If you have not subscribed, make sure that you do. We're broadcasting both on Facebook and on YouTube. You can see all of our so Together Tuesday tutorials on YouTube. But if you subscribe, then they'll let you know when we go live and when we've scheduled the live. So it's a pretty great deal. And uh, we have the I Love Cuddle Facebook group. So make sure that you have joined us there. It's a super fun group. We have over 6,000 women now. Well, some men too. So we have over 6,000 people on there. <laughs> He's one of them who are on there who share their different creations and projects and questions and all of that good stuff. It's a fabulous group uh, full of inspiration and really a lot of education. So join us there and we'll be back next week. We have a really fun project uh, called the Nappy Bag. I think it's next week. And it's a really fun little uh, perfect project for toddler, preschooler age kids. So, and also could be made larger. I think that we might make a bigger one for next week for me. So <laughs> we'll see, but we'll be back next week for Sew Together Tuesday. And until then, happy sewing. <laughs>